In this video, I'm going to explain what webhooks are, and I'm going to go through a live example of building a webhook from an Airtable button and sending that data to Integromat for further processing. So let's get started and talk about what a webhook is. Um, the best way to do that is with an illustration. I have this function, this automation built in Integromat. Now, this automation grabs images from Airtable and sends those images to Google Vision for processing and then updates Airtable with the results of that processing. Now, currently, I have this on a schedule of every 15 minutes. So every 15 minutes, this Integromat function goes to Airtable and says, hey, do you have any new images that qualify? And then 15 minutes later, hey, do you have any new images that qualify? On and on and on, 24 hours a day. Obviously, for some things, that's not that efficient. It is an automated process, so there's no triggers that have to happen, but happens every 15 minutes and it takes processing units to do that. So what a webhook is, is it's a way for one application to reach out to another application and say, hey, I've got new information for you, here that information is. So instead of that the second application constantly asking, hey, do you got new stuff for me? Hey, do you have new information? Um, the first application just simply sends data when it's available to be processed. So in this example, I have um, this process that every 15 minutes says, hey, Airtable, do you have new records for me to process? So what we're going to do is just build a button. What we're going to do is right now, all of these images have been processed and these tags have been dynamically added. So we're going to just go ahead and duplicate that record. We're going to make it unprocessed and we're going to delete all of this information. So we're going to add a new field here. Uh, we'll just call it an action. We're going to choose button and the action is going to be run script. Now I'm going to select the script that I want to run. And we're going to select dashboard one and we're going to select the script called scripting. Let's just make that a little bit more descriptive. Let me just look at my code here. I've got some code. There will be a link in the notes and you can um, get a version of this. Uh, simply, you can just cut and paste this. This is just like a super simple script you could use um, to call webhooks. So basically, to configure this, you just need to get the URL of the webhook, um, the description of the, the button that you want in Airtable, um, the name of the table, and the fields that you want to send. So I want to send area. Actually, let's just say area for now. So I'm going to send area as a field and I'm just going to say finish editing. And then I've got this run script and let's make that look a little better. looks pretty lame. There we go. So I've got a run script button and let's be a little bit more descriptive. I'm going to call the label. get tags okay so currently let's go into integromat my current automation just uh runs once every 15 minutes so we're going to modify this automation to to receive information from a webhook so i'm going to go ahead and unlink this and i'm going to delete this module and i'm going to click and I'm going to go 
webhook and I'm going to add a custom webhook. I'm going to create a brand new webhook and I'm going to call this um, animal pair table animal tracker image process. It doesn't really matter the webhook name. Um, there are some advanced uh, settings if I want to get headers and stuff. I don't need that for now. And we're going to define a dynamic data structure. So I'm going to click on save and it's going to give me a URL for this brand new webhook. So I'm going to just double click on this URL. I'm going to come back into my script and I'm going to replace this with that new URL. I'm going to go ahead and finish editing and I'm going to close this and show you what it looks like in in its full processing. Right now this is listening for data for a test so that it can determine the structure of what that data is so you can bind that to other steps in your in your um, Integromat automation. So I'm going to come here and just click on get tags. It's going to automatically, it's going to give me an error because this didn't respond, but it says successfully determined. So in real time, it determined what the results are and it's created a um, data object for that. So what I'm going to do here is say, okay, and I'm just going to move this over and I'm going to run this module only. It's just waiting and we're going to one more time. We're going to come here and we're going to click on get tags and this is going to stop here. So we've got one result. So notice the result is the ID of the record and the area I passed, which is Oasis. So that is the area you know, in this example, this says Oasis. So if I wanted to, I could pass in like created, I could pass in other things simply by editing this code and saying um, created, for instance. Let's just uh, try that. Now, if I did that and I click to run and I go get tags it'll come with a response again and notice I have Oasis and I have created so what I have is the ID so I need to go and my next step is to say okay I need to query Airtable and get that record so I'm gonna go to the wildlife reserve and it's going to say, and my table is animal tracker, and it's going to say, what is the record ID? And now I have those fields that I can use that were passed in via the webhook, and I can bind that data. So I can simply click ID here and bind it. So let's just run one more time. If I click on run, well, we'll stop that. But Oh, so one other thing, just little Airtable thing. If I don't click the button and I have this open and I click run, it's going to ask me what record that I want to use. So clicking the button pretty much just pre-selects the record and bypasses that step. So anyways, I ran that again and now I grabbed my webhook and I automatically got the record because I did a data bind for the field that came back from that webhook. So that is a uh, simple explanation of what webhooks are and how you could, instead of doing polling and using Integromat or Zapier or whatever um, tooling you have to grab that data, this is an example of how you can send data to any webhook anywhere that they can further process that information. In this case, that would be Integromat. Um, so webhooks are not 
uh, an integramat thing that is just a standard uh, technology fair communication protocol that's used on the internet. So um, that's what a webhook is, and that's how we use webhooks with integramat is that way. And so then webhooks do show up in your webhook section. So you can see the webhooks, but that's how they show up and that's how you use them. So now that we've done that, we can data bind tools and we can do all this, this other automation down the line. So the one difference is now we have to bind our new because we deleted that other automation. So we're just going to add this new or not the other automation. We deleted the other Airtable step. So we need to bind this new Airtable step here. And there we go. So let me just run this once and see if this works. So I clicked run and looks like it worked and it automatically processed that record. Now we're still getting this unexpected token. That's because the webhook is not um, responding with anything. So what we can do is at this last step, we can say webhook response, and this will automatically give a response to the calling uh, to the calling webhook. So the webhook knows that it was successful. And so in this body, I will just put some JSON and just say successfully. We'll say successfully added tags. And that should do it. Let's run it again. This is going to just sit and wait. And let's just delete these tags again. Say get tags. And now it's going to process it and give us a message that says successfully added tags. So we can do more stuff. Um, you could get fancy and give like a custom webhook response. This could be dynamic based on the data that um, comes back from any one of the previous apps. But that is how you would use webhooks with a service and how you would get a proper response from Integramat. One other thing to note is if this is not running, like as in I have not clicked run once or I do not have it scheduled, it will err. So the system, the webhooks are only turned on when they're actually running in Integramat. If you turn that webhook off, like right now it's not running, I'll get syntax errors. If I select any record, it's gonna just err because the webhook is not giving a response. So you have to have the webhooks turned on in order for Integramat to accept and process data. And if it's not turned on, then it doesn't queue up anymore. Um, the data is just lost and you get an error message. So that is something to take note of. So I hope you like this video breakdown. Uh, this video is a one part of a larger Integramat course that I have. So you can check that out if you're interested in learning more about Integramat. And this style of learning um, is something that is good for you. Also, the like I said previously, the little code snippet for Airtable to easily create webhooks for Integramat or any other service, that link for that as well is in the show notes. That's it for the webhook explanation with Airtable and Integramat. Hope you enjoyed the video. If this video was easy for you to understand and you like the style of learning, 
Uh, this video is part of an IntegraMet course I have. You can check the links in the notes to get more information on that. Also, I do, like I mentioned before, I have a link for that little Airtable snippet. I use it all the time when I'm doing web hooks that are triggered by buttons in Airtable for scripting. So check that out as well. I have more content coming soon. Subscribe if you're interested. Have a good one.